morning, ChemCom class. I uh, just got a short little PowerPoint for you here about naming of covalent molecules. We've talked about covalent molecules now for last week and that a covalent molecule is sharing electrons. Okay, and that's how it's making its bond as opposed to ionic compounds that are donating and receiving electrons. Um, we're going to learn how to name those molecules. So why is carbon dioxide CO2 and carbon monoxide is CO? You probably already can figure out where that's going and you can kind of see the prefixes there are telling you something. Then we'll also name alkanes. Um, alkanes are a class of hydrocarbon, okay? And we'll uh, briefly discuss that. All right, so when we're naming a covalent compound, we need to know understand the prefix system, okay? So this is the prefix system. Uh, you would have this available to you on any quiz or homework. Basically, di, ti, ch, tri, tetra, all the way to deca. Okay. Notice when we name the first element, there is no mono. Mono never gets put on the first element. All other prefixes will go there. Mono will not. So carbon dioxide is never monocarbon dioxide. It's just carbon dioxide. So the first element, you would never put mono. Then you determine the second element. And notice, mono is an option on the second element. That's how we get carbon monoxide. But basically, if you only have one of the first element, you would only put that element's name. Another thing you need to know is on the second element is we change the ending to IDE. So oxi oxygen becomes oxide, phosphorus becomes phosphide, nitrogen becomes nitride, sulfur, sulfur becomes sulfide. Okay, so you need to understand that carbon dioxide is two dioxygens, all right, in the second position. So we're going to look at some names here. These are pretty straightforward. There are two nitrogens here, so that would be dinitrogen, and we have five oxygens, so that'd be pentaoxide. Pretty simple. You're literally just using the prefix to determine how to show how many um, of that element there are. So this, we would not put monobore on here. If there's only one of the first element, we just state its name, boron. And then we have three fluorines, so it'd be trifluoride. Okay, three, and then we change the ending to IDE. This is carbon monoxide, because we have one carbon, so we just list it. And then we have one oxygen, so mono, and then we change the ending to IDE. This, this is water, okay? And we would just say, if we were going to put it in a, in a covalent naming system, it would be dihydrogen monoxide. Okay, so you can look fancy in front of your friends and tell them that you like to drink dihydrogen monoxide. And they'll think, I don't know what they'll think. <laughs> okay. So it would be sulfur hexabromide. Sulfur hexabromide. And phosphorus pentachloride. Okay, notice that these, all of these are a lot of, all these are non-metals, okay? They're on the right side of the periodic table, all right? Lots of different types of elements here. And that's pretty much, there are a couple special compounds. So CH4 is called methane and NH3 is called ammonia. So sometimes, I mean, water would be another example. Sometimes we don't say dihydrogen monoxide. We just say water because that's what we know it as. We don't say um, carbon tetrahydride, we say methane, because everybody, like in the scientific community, people know what methane is. Same thing with ammonia. Um, there's multiple ways that we can represent these. Um, we can re represent them with a ball and stick model, a space filling model. Um, it helps us kind of see that, you know, a lot of times when we draw, if we draw methane, we draw it like this with everything at right angles. Okay, but that's not actually how it works. 
Um, it's actually in the shape of a tetrahedron, which is kind of a pyramid shape with a triangle base that looks more like this. Okay. And the reason that happens is because those hydrogens are trying to get as far away from each other as possible, and they're in a 3D model. So this is like what we would call a structural diagram. That's how we draw it. But these are more of what we would call like actual true representations in the three-dimensional space, the space filling or the ball and stick. Okay, just understand that those um, different models are available. Okay. Um, we can also write the formulas in a couple different ways. We can write it as a molecular formula, all right? And then we can write it, and then we can also write in a condensed formula, which is actually not condensed, okay? With a molecular formula, you put the, all the carbons and all the hydrogens in one grouping. But in a condensed formula, you write each carbon and show what each carbon is attached to. So this is CH3, so if we were going to draw this out, we know that these hydrogens are bonded to this carbon. And then we have a CH2, and then we have an OH. So the condensed formula kind of helps us see how it's bonded together. If we wrote it in the molecular way, it's harder to see where that oxygen is, how it's bonded, but the condensed formula shows us that. So just to be clear, these two things here are the same, okay? It's just one's written in a way that helps us see how it's bonded together, okay? We can see that for propane and ethane as well. All right, so now we're going on to alkanes. Alkanes are, remember, they're hydrocarbons, which means they're carbon and hydrogen bonded together, okay? The model for an alkane, what, however many carbons you have, you will always have twice the number of hydrogens plus two. Meaning, if I have 10 carbons, I would double that and then add two to figure out how many hydrogens I have. So that'd be 22. 10 times two is 20, plus two is 22. If I had 1,000 carbons, the hydrogens would be 2,002. Okay, so with alkanes, and we're going to start learning quite a few of different types of hydrocarbons. We're going to start slow. With alkanes, the model is double the number of carbons and add two to, to, to get how many hydrogens you have. Okay, but the name of these is always based on the number of carbons. Okay, the number of carbons is going to tell us what prefix we should use. And notice this prefix system is different. It's not mono, di, tri. It's meth, f, prop, but, pent, and you've heard these before, because alkanes end in the ane. So methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane. Those are words that you probably have heard before. So all you have to do to name an alkane is figure out how many carbons there are. So this has two carbons. So the prefix for two is f. And then it's just, and it's an alkane, so we put ane on the end, ethane. This one has nine. The prefix for nine is non, and then we put ane on the end, non-ane. Okay, it's very simple, okay? Here's the thing. You've got to be careful because a lot of times students mix alkanes with the covalent naming system. The only thing you name like this are hydrocarbons, which will only be carbon and hydrogen. Okay, that's what this naming system is for. Only carbon and hydrogen molecules. This system back here is covalent naming. It is based on all covalent structures. Okay, so you'll have different... Notice, we have carbon here, but this is carbon and oxygen. There's different types of... Uh, elements present in these when we're using this naming system okay that's really all i have for you today to do um, we will work more on this tomorrow we'll practice this but as long as you got those notes down and you understand what's going on we will continue practicing it tomorrow be good to somebody today we will see you